to die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep we say to end, the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream, aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil. Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about a subject which is, for many people, very hard to accept. Death. There is a saying in English that goes, all good things must come to an end. This phrase also covers our own lives. Just as we are born, so shall we die. It is an unstoppable or inevitable process, and for many humans, it is one which causes a great deal of distress. But why is this so? Humans are very special. You and I have a unique ability of knowing that we are alive. We are self-aware. Our conscience tells us this during every waking moment. Right now, I know that I am standing in a churchyard, surrounded by tombstones and graves. I am aware of this, and I know it's happening. Humans are sentient beings. We learn more than just our basic instincts. We gather knowledge, and we are able to feel a wide range of emotions, such as happiness, sadness, loneliness, and fear. As we discussed in an earlier lesson, fear is a very strong emotion, and it can control many parts of our existence. We tend to be afraid of things that cannot be fully understood. Our fear of the unknown is probably the strongest of all our phobias. Humans are mortal. We only have a certain amount of time in this world. The word mortal comes from the Latin word mortalis, which literally means to die. You see this word used in mortuary, a place where dead bodies are kept. Mortality, the event of death, or death on a large scale. The mortality rate from the flood is 20,000. A dead person can generally be described as a corpse, body, or the deceased. They can also be informally described as a stiff, although this term can cause great offence. That sounds like a squirrel. I hope he's okay. After any animal dies, it will begin to rot or decompose. The cells will break down and be absorbed, for example, into the ground. 
Humans are organic. We are made of living material. So once we die, so do all the cells which make up our whole body. So what happens here after you die? Normally your body will be taken to a cold place for storage, such as a mortuary. Most large hospitals have a mortuary in them. If your death cannot be explained, then someone will examine your body on both the outside and inside. This is called a post-mortem, which means after death. This procedure can also be called an autopsy. The person who carries out the examination is called a pathologist or coroner. The ceremony following a person's death is called a funeral. These can be conducted very differently between countries and cultures. The body is placed in a wooden box called a coffin and then taken to a religious place where a service normally follows. After this event there are two options. The body can be buried underground in a grave or tomb or it can be burned in a cremation ceremony. These days this is done in a special building called a crematorium. Do you ever think about dying? It's a funny subject, isn't it? I want to die in my sleep like my grandfather, not screaming and shouting like his passengers. <laughs> Western cultures often make death into a humorous subject. We make jokes about dying and often laugh about it. But why do we do this if we are so afraid of it? It is a well-known fact that humans tend to laugh at things we do not fully understand. Humour can act as a kind of release for all of our worries and anxieties. It may seem like a strange thing to say, but many of us have a deep fascination for subjects connected with death. And there is no better place for demonstrating this than on our television screens. Take the news, for example. This is DNN News. Coming up tonight, man dies after terrible accident. We have exclusive video pictures of when it actually happened. These images will upset you, so be sure to stay tuned. Also coming up, woman dies after terrible accident. We also have pictures and many descriptions of the moment it happened, right here for your curiosity and viewing pleasure. Don't go away. The subject of death and dying is often described as a taboo subject. The word taboo means something that must never be openly discussed, or a topic which makes people feel uncomfortable when talking about it. It may seem strange to some people, but there are situations where a person wants to die. They wish to end their life. We describe this person as suicidal. They may try to kill themselves. They want to commit suicide. Taking your own life is illegal in some countries, while others allow it for certain situations. For example, if a person is dying from a fatal or terminal illness. The belief of what happens after you die varies deeply between many groups of people. Some believe that our life force or spirit floats away to another place. Some believe that we are reborn on earth as a different creature. And some believe that the feeling of being dead is the same as before we are born. 
just a lot longer. Is it possible to be dead and still alive? Well, the answer to that question is yes. After a person dies, they will usually be pronounced legally dead. This means that they have no chance of being brought back to life or resuscitated. However, in other situations, the heart can continue beating after the brain has stopped functioning. This is classed as brain death. Sadly, there is no chance of the person ever recovering. This often occurs when a person is being kept alive on a machine, such as a ventilator. A person can also be classed as clinically dead. This means that the blood supply has stopped flowing, the heartbeat and breathing has ceased, and there is no visible sign of life. This type of death can be reversed, and it is possible for a person to be brought back to life if it is done quickly enough. Clinical death lasting longer than three minutes will normally result in serious and irreversible brain damage. It would be fair to say that death is more of a process rather than just one definite event. The theme of death has been used very often in many forms of literature. The playwright William Shakespeare and authors Charles Dickens and Edgar Allan Poe at some point would use death as a way of studying the human condition and our own morbid fascination with dying. Poetry is often read out at funerals and a speech is normally given describing the life of the person who died. This is called a eulogy. The word dead can be used in many ways. Instead of saying very, we can say the party was dead good. This weather is dead cold. Your new hat is dead cool. As a way of showing emptiness or silence, the room was dead. Everyone had left. The forest had a dead calm about it to show that something electrical is not working or functioning. The lights are dead. I cannot get the TV to work. It is dead. The batteries are dead. They have no energy left. There are some idioms and phrases for death or dying. Pushing up the daisies to be dead and buried. Pop your clogs to die, croak, to die suddenly. He or she bought the farm. He or she has died. Fall off your perch or twig to drop dead. It is a fact of life that one day I will be dead, and so will you. There is nothing we can do to stop this. However, we can make the most of our time on this earth. Doing something useful with our time here can help others, and it also gives us a sense of purpose and our life some meaning. You only live once. This is not a rehearsal. Life is like a big performance, and once the curtain has come down on it, there will be no encore. That is all from me for today. I wish you all good health, stay in the pink, live long and prosper. Thank you for watching me teaching you. This is Mr Duncan in England saying ta-ta for now.